Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to discuss summary for chapter 14, Thermodynamics. So for this topic, there are three subtopics. The first one is first law of thermodynamics. The second part is internal energy and also thermodynamic processes. Okay, so let us start. So for 14.1, the first law of thermodynamics is the heat energy supply to the system equals to the sum of the increase in internal energy and work done by the gas. So we can write equations for the heat energy is equal to change of the internal energy plus work done. Okay, where our internal energy, the equations we can write it as F over 2 nr times change of the temperature okay meaning that when there is a changes of the temperature there will be a changes of the internal energy okay so when the temperature increase the internal energy will increase as well okay so the value is the work done okay q is the heat energy okay let us look at the sign convention for the first law of thermodynamics Okay, so for example, here we have positive and negative. Okay, when Q is positive, Q positive means that the heat is flow into the system. Okay, so when the question says the heat is flow into the system, Q we must substitute positive. When heat is lost to the surrounding or lost by the system, or we can say flow out. Okay, so the Q or the heat energy we should put negative okay next we go to the internal energy so as we know our internal energy equation is equal to f n r times change of the temperature okay meaning that our internal energy is actually directly proportional to the change of the temperature okay so when the temperature is increased we must substitute delta u or internal energy positive Okay, so when the temperature is reduced, the internal energy we should put negative. Okay, next we go to the work done. Okay, so work done by the system, okay, meaning there is expansion. Okay, mengembang. Eh? Okay, if let's say the work done on the system or what we say compression, so we should substitute negative into the work done okay okay so this side conventions we must alert okay because uh, it's very important when we want to use these equations eh? the first law of the thermodynamic okay okay next we go to 14.2 the internal energy okay so if you refer back to the internal energy there are a b c d okay a b c d so as we know our internal energy equation is equal to f over 2 nrt yeah? change of the temperature okay or we can write it as f over 2 nkt okay so it depends on what are the informations we have okay so the first one let us uh, refer back the internal energy for a to c and then comes to b okay so we will take this part uh, this is a to c and then goes to b okay so if let's say the internal energy from a to c until b is equal to tangent okay meaning that from b to d until b is actually equal to the internal energy from a to d and then go back to b okay a d b or we can so it's equal to u a b so as long as the initial is at point A and the final is at point B, the internal energy we consider they are the same. Okay, however, so if they are from A and then the final point is at B, the internal energy will be the same. Okay, however, if from B to C and then go back to A or from B directly to A or u from b to d d to a eh? meaning that we move in 
reverse uh, in a reverse path okay in a reverse path meaning that our internal energy will be negative tenjo okay so this is our internal energy okay next let us go to thermodynamic processes here we have uh, four types of thermodynamic processes the first one is isotherma where when isotherma meaning that t is constant okay so when t is constant the internal energy will equal to zero because internal energy is equal to f over 2 nrt okay so when there is no changing of the temperature our internal energy will also equal to zero okay so if you based on the first law of the thermodynamic q equals to change of the internal energy plus the work done therefore when isotherma your internal energy will equal to zero and finally our heat energy will equals to work done only okay so if we follow Boyce's law okay when temperature is constant it's actually Boyce's law we can write p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 okay so if you refer back to the graph okay this is the graph where we have the thermal expansion where the the volume is increasing from v1 to v2 okay. whereas for thermal compression our volume is from v2 the greater go back to uh, v1 okay so meaning that there's are uh, two different things the first one is thermal expansion where the volume is increased and the second one is the thermal isothermal compression where the volume is reducing okay so for the work done when uh, isothermal we can write it as work done equals to nrt ln volume final over the initial volume okay so it's nrt ln v2 over v1 or we can write it as nrt ln okay because we know that p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 so we can also substitute v2 over v1 change it become pressure 1 over pressure 2 okay so these are the equation for the uh, work done for the isothermal processes okay next we will go to when p constant okay so when p constant we call it as isobaric okay so when isobaric meaning that the p is constant okay so if we follow the first law of thermodynamic okay our q equals to delta u plus work done our work done here we can change it become p times the change of the volume uh, because p is constant okay and because p is constant it actually obeys child's law where we can use v1 over t1 equals to v2 over t2 okay okay next we go to the graph so since p is constant p is constant okay so there are two types of isobaric the first one is the isobaric expansion meaning that the v is increasing and the second one is isobaric compression meaning that the volume is reducing okay so next okay work done for isobaric we can write it as p equals to change of the volume okay or we can write it as v final minus v initial okay so this is the work done for isobaric uh, where the pressure is constant okay number three the third process okay number third process is isochloric okay or we can write it as iso volume metric okay so iso volume metric or isochloric here is actually refers to v constant okay so since v is constant meaning that our work done equals to p times change of the volume okay so when v is constant 
or equals to zero there's no changes of the volume meaning that there's no expansion or there's no compression our work done will also equal to zero okay so meaning that work done is actually depends on the uh, changes of the volume so since v is constant so work done is equals to zero therefore our heat energy will equal to the change of the internal energy okay and for this case is also obeys the law where p1 over t1 equals to p2 over t2 okay gay lusik's law okay okay now we refer back to the graph Okay, since V is constant, uh, so V is constant, meaning that the graph that we will get is actually is vertically straight. Okay, so what is the uh, changes here is the pressure, okay, whether it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, and the work done P equals to change of V since there's no changing of the volume, therefore work done for isochloric or isovolumetric is equal to zero. Okay, so these are the conditions that you need to know. And the last, number four is adiabatic. Okay, so adiabatic meaning that there is no heat transfer. Okay, meaning that Q is equal to zero. So since Q equals to zero, meaning that our change of the internal energy will equal to negative work done. Okay, or we can write work done equals to negative delta u okay so for this case our p1 v1 over t1 will equal to p2 v2 over t2 okay for ideal gas so if you refer back to the adiabatic usually adiabatic is the uh, graph uh, changing of the temperature okay so meaning that is from point a it will go to point b Okay, so if from point A to point B, meaning that it is adiabatic expansion eh, because A is at volume, okay, as at V1 and B is at V2, okay. But if from B to A, it will be adiabatic compression, okay, adiabatic compression. Okay, next, okay, next we will go to adiabatic expansion where when v2 is greater than v1 meaning that the volume is actually increasing so when volume is increasing meaning that our work done also will increase okay or you will get positive eh? because just now we already learned when expansion meaning that your work done is positive so since work done is positive meaning that our internal energy you will get negative okay you will get negative eh? so i write here if expansion meaning that the work done is positive so when work done is positive internal energy will be negative so when internal energy negative meaning that the temperature is reducing okay okay last one is the adiabatic compression okay so adiabatic compression meaning that the volume is reducing so when volume reducing work done is reducing or you will get or you will get a negative value uh, negative work done okay so when we have so when the work done is negative meaning that our internal energy is equal to positive or it means that the temperature is actually increasing eh? so if you refer back to this graph okay if you refer back to this graph expansion eh? expansion meaning that the volume is increasing but if you refer back expansion meaning that it's from a to b okay expansion is from a to b okay meaning that a the temperature is d2 and when it expands it will comes to b where the volume is v2 but at that moment the temperature is t1 eh? becomes smaller okay so remember when expansion adiabatic expansion your volume is increasing the work done is positive but the temperature is reducing okay and uh, for adiabatic compression is from b to a okay so when from b to a from b to a your volume is actually reducing but the temperature is increasing uh, because it's from b to a okay where our t1 is actually smaller than t2 okay so that's all for this summary okay so we will continue with the exercise chapter 14 see you on next video 
Bye. Thank you.